Welcome back to Seek of Strength and welcome back to A Theory of Training. The ball is going to be rolling on these now for the next couple of months. Mm. In today's episode, we're talking about the concept of doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or maybe any grappling or combat sport. Or you could extrapolate some of these to any sport you're doing and training in terms of an s session on the same day. So that might be a strength training session or it might be a conditioning session. So it's something a lot of athletes grapple with. Generally, it's... <laughs> oh, I didn't even know. Fun. But all right, be serious now. So a lot of athletes actually grapple with this issue or they kind of roll around with this a little bit. Hey, I'll stop now. So if you kind of try and lay out your week, if you're working full time, you have relationships, families, you might be doing other sports maybe, and you're trying to encompass as much of your sports specific work as possible while also balancing the need for some S and C work. Now, the first question we have to ask here, is this a hard no? Is it a problem for everyone? Is this always a no? to do your s &C work, or particularly your strength training work, on the same day as your rolling or your grappling? Yeah, I think the first thing to say is, it's definitely not a hard no. Um, the major point or the major kind of starting point with, with this discussion in your head is, you have to think about where you're at now with both of these. Uh, and that's the real thing. What shape are you in? How much work do you have to do relatively in both of these silos? Um, and the big thing for me is where you are physically. What condition are you in now? What level of experience do you have with physical training and physical conditioning? Um, we do see it a lot with people. Oftentimes, and this isn't to throw shade at anyone, but the most common group you see this in is people who've been doing jiu-jitsu for a while and mightn't be in great shape physically. And then they say, okay, I'm going to augment this or I'm going to add in some extra strength and conditioning work alongside my jiu-jitsu um, to make my physique better and that's that's the kind of group I have the biggest hesitation over people doing it in if you're a straight up born killer international IBJJF champion uh, maybe purple belt or brown belt and you're in great shape you did some SNC work a few years ago you don't have any injuries hanging over you in those cases most of those guys and girls will add in an extra two three or four gym sessions per week very easily and it won't massively negatively affect everything else in the cases in the past where we've seen people having the biggest issues it tends to be people who mightn't be in great shape right now mightn't have a hell of a lot of gym experience they then go stacking the gym work on top of the uh, grappling or jiu-jitsu work and that's where the kind of issues pop up so it, it really is Depending on where you're hopping on the ladder, it depends if you can start doing these two-a-days or not. Uh, in the cases where maybe you're just a few rungs too low on that ladder, you might be better off just reducing the total number of sessions of BJJ or of wrestling or grappling or something like that, and then adding in the SNC work or the direct physical preparedness work on the non-training days. So if you've met that criteria where you probably should be doing it, or if it's something that's an option available for you, you've got basically two options. You've got something like strength training in the morning and jiu-jitsu in the evening, or jiu-jitsu in the morning and strength training in the evening. Now, there's a lot of evidence available to us, and there's been something that's been studied rigorously as most professional athletes across many Olympic sports, where we would see most of this research done, train multiple sessions per day and many of those have high workloads of sport specific work to do whether that be throwing or running sprinting whatever sport it is someone is doing a lot of times the sport specific skill for professional athletes is something they'll do very very frequently throughout the week so fitting in s and c work during the in season or the off season might not necessarily always be able to meet its own day or several days across the week when there's going to be no overlap it's just not really possible for most sports so the option here for us is lifting in the morning seems very, very beneficial to, to potentiate your work later in the evening. So there's something in sports sites known as post-activation potentiation, and it comes across in many different forms of activity. We can have the most acute example where, for example, I'm doing a vertical jump. I'll do 85% of my back squat for a single and then either a minute to five minutes later, depending on where we're set up, I'll move then into that vertical jump and we'll see very, very consistently that it is a phenomenon repeated where your vertical jump height will be increased 
temporarily the effect will dissipate shortly after if you hadn't done that heavy back squat beforehand assuming you're reasonably well trained in back squats so the PAP is something that is a good example of how training can affect us in the long term or in the short term in terms of neurological benefits one of those benefits is strength training in the morning is quite beneficial to potentiate effects on either strength training or sport specific activity in the evening so if in the morning we do a strength training session, we might do something like very light power cleans and then we'll back squat up to 60 to 80% for a single. Now, you could do a full training session, which has its own issues. So if we do this kind of potentiation session, this lighter, lower volume session, in the evening, you will then end up with potentially improved in performance if you're a well-trained reasonably athletic person who is pretty far into their career either intermediate or beyond in terms of skill level in your sport and your general physical capacity development so if you're a very very new athlete to strength training and your sport if you do that morning session that strength training session you're probably just going to make your performance in the evening much worse because the threshold for the fatigue from the strength training session in the morning is just going to be too much for you and essentially going to ruin your evening session so what you do is you look for that criteria, you look for the criteria you've met that Dara just spoke about there is if you're well trained enough and you're in a good enough session, you decide what kind of period of training you are in. And then in that morning session, then if you've met this criteria, you'll go, I'm either needed to do an actual strength training workout or an actual S&C workout. And then I'll either have some impact on my performance later in my grappling or my BJJ or maybe no impact. Now, if you're an athlete who is on the slightly less well-trained side of things, but you still met the criteria for training two sessions during the day, a better option might be to do your jiu-jitsu or your grappling or your judo or whatever sport it is in the morning, if that's an option available to you. So what this allows us to do is get our really sport-specific, highly skilled work out of the way that requires us to be fresh because... If you're not a well-trained athlete and you don't have a lot of well-adjusted motor patterns, that strength training in the morning, like we mentioned, might just throw you off in the evening where even though you might get some a PAP on your power development, it may be so fatiguing that it actually just negatively affects your sport-specific work. The opposite side of that is getting your sport-specific work done first in the morning. Now, this has some caveats as morning training can be a little bit of a negative impact in terms of uh, hormonal regulation. You might have higher levels of uh, melatonin still left in your system, which seems to negatively impact the CNS, which is one of the reasons it's good for sleeping because it dampens down your central nervous system to get you to sleep. You might not have enough food. And there's a couple of different things we've talked about before where in a morning session, it might not be ideal, but something you can get used to. Now, if you're in that place where you're well-trained enough, you are kind of have to do two sessions a day, but you're going to do your sport-specific work in the morning, then you can leave your strength training in the evening. So even though you might be fatigued from your morning session, you're still not heavily impacting your sports specific work and still you will be able to get a productive training session in. So the next thing I really think people trip up on or when they're making this calculation, they kind of get a bit confused or maybe they just forget about it completely is you have to think about what you're doing for the rest of the day. And this is by far the, the biggest kind of pitfall for, for the two-a-day sessions. So if you're in the, the kind of unique position where maybe you work for yourself or maybe you're doing something where certain days of the week you have very, very concentrated work and other days of the week maybe you're doing kind of administrative work or things like that. In those cases, it's very simple. The overall cognitive load for the work you're going to do that day mightn't be massively high and you mightn't be kind of directly rated on your performance for that day in those cases it's grand you can go you can do your two days you can maybe be a bit pooped when you're in work everything will be grand if on the other hand you are a computer programmer who's working to a schedule to have everything finished for your project manager by friday afternoon if you are a neuromuscular specialist or a vascular surgeon in these kind of cases your workload in the morning and the evening have a massive influence on your actual professional workload you're going to get done throughout the day and in these cases certainly with clients we've worked with in the past your ability to do two a days really is dictated by what you're doing in between those sessions um, and 
I won't name out professions, but there's certainly a lot of professions out there where you can get away with kind of being a bit tired after the morning session. Maybe you get a good break in the middle of the day where you can eat a good amount of food or even get some rest in the middle of the day and then go and hit an evening session quite well. Certainly if you're in one of those high stress environments or a very, very competitive kind of incentive-based professional environment, it's not ideal to be doing your two-a-days and I really would kind of warrant some caution in those cases. So if you're going to be running from the morning session to make it just barely to the office or barely to the facility by the time you start work and then maybe you just grab a cup of coffee, you're poorly hydrated over the course of the day, maybe you're not able to take a break to take on some proper amount of food and you're just grabbing a protein bar or a protein shake when you can. In these cases, your lifestyle just really isn't set up well for the two-a-days and that's why it's so difficult as an amateur athlete or as somebody who's not being paid to do their sport, it's so, so difficult to get the amount of training volume in. I mean, it's certainly something coming outside the sport of jiu-jitsu and, and going into the, the sport of weightlifting. A lot of weightlifters in the Western world aren't professional full-time athletes and they really do struggle against the kind of larger countries particularly some of the larger Asian countries who can train as much as they want they recover massively and they don't have to do anything else they probably never ever had a real job and in these cases they do get the advantage over the the amateur athlete or the athlete who has some sort of uh, even just like brand deals where they have to do some small amount of work. So it heavily comes down to your priorities as an athlete and what it is you need to get out of jiu-jitsu and what it is you want to get out of jiu-jitsu. So if you're someone aspiring for international medals, professional development, full-time athlete status, training twice a day is probably something you're going to have to encounter as BJJ is a relatively low fatigue sport, quick recovery time from training sessions, especially if you're a well-adapted athlete. So if you're rolling a lot, it's probably not feasible for most of the year for you to encounter sessions where you're not doing any BJJ training and just doing strength and conditioning training as likely that probably should be a day off so realistically for a lot of people who are really aiming for that high level even if you're working a job and you've met the criteria fits just talked about you probably are in a position where you do have to double up on those sessions it's a common problem is it ideal for ultimate strength and conditioning development yes does that matter? It really depends on your particular case, as oftentimes we'll encounter athletes, not just in BJJ, but in plenty of sports where for periods of the year, they'll take it to find that they'll take it to find off season. And that's the reason it's there. It's an opportunity to let them rest and recover and build on their particular attributes that they need. This is kind of one of the problems in BJJ we see is that because it's kind of so low fatigue, we don't necessarily notice that development of fatigue and that loading and a lot of athletes are very intense and they want to train very hard and then they don't take a lot of deloads or defined off seasons in BJJ and it's something we definitely recommend where you have an on season where you're doing a lot of competitions and this goes all the way to many of the uh, combat athletes we have uh, black belts in jiu-jitsu MMA athletes different places like that where you have to take a defined off season even if it's not well defined in your sport you take it for you and then in this scenario, you, you might have less sport-specific work, more specific strength conditioning work to improve in those qualities to allow you to develop your sport further. And for people who aren't really aspiring for that elite status as much as possible, we'd really recommend not doubling up. In most cases, it usually ends quite badly. It ends badly for your jiu-jitsu or your grappling or whatever sport it is. It usually ends badly for your work-life balance. It usually ends up with you getting less sleep, worse nutrition, and very often, it's something that takes quite a while to acclimatize to. So doing multiple sessions in an environment where you're already working a lot in your relationships and family, it just doesn't work out that well. So look, a BGJ in the evening and 15 minutes on the walk or 20 minutes and have a run in the morning are okay. But if we're trying to do meaningful, progressive strength conditioning sessions, the doubling up for those amateur athletes is just an all around bad idea. And we'd really recommend against it, even though it might make sense scheduling wise, it probably does make sense in terms of your pure athletic ability. Yeah, I think a lot of what we see with BJJ athletes is they have a massive focus on hypertrophy and then a kind of secondary focus on physique, which is pretty much against almost all other sport SNC kind of paradigms where you want athletic development, speed development, strength development. This need or this want to put on a lot of muscle mass, in most cases, hypertrophy is massively stifled 
by people being overly active. They're training too much, they're not recovering enough, they're not sleeping enough, not eating enough, uh, and you will actually just hold yourself back. You'd be far better off doing a lot less training, um, and you'd have far better outcomes in the realms of hypertrophy and just generally getting bigger. So that is probably an additional point to be made is that a lot of professional athletes use PEDs, performance enhancing drugs, lots of jiu-jitsu competitions that don't test for it, and some of them barely test for it. So they're able to kind of get away with this undefined off-season and increase with all their attributes via the use of PEDs. Now, not all of them are, of course, but the less talented you are and the less PEDs you take or the absence of PEDs will make things just a little bit harder for you. So if you're looking for a strength training program for your grappling or your combat sport, head over to seekstrength.com where we have a 10-week strength and power program for combat sports. First six weeks are primarily focused on strength and hypertrophy, and then the last four weeks are specifically on power development.